Well, hello, and welcome to Life After 3D, episode 23. I know it's episode 23, because I've just looked before I came upstairs to record this. Um, this one is a bit different. Um, I want to cover some of the things that's been happening with health, my health, uh, and how things have got a little bit more complicated um, for a little while now. Let's start at the beginning. Um, now, I've been going through a lot of pain on top of all the other stuff with the nerve damage in the hands for well, three and a half years now. Um, it got a lot worse the last two years. Uh, it got to the stage where I could hardly, but I couldn't stand for any more than a minute uh, without getting a lot of pain in my hip and my feet. Um, it was getting progressively worse until I had to bite the bullet and go to the doctors, which I had not done in about three and a half, four years. I don't particularly like doctors. I probably would have went sooner, but the whole COVID thing, effectively, I, the local doctor's surgery was closed down um, to a large degree. So I really couldn't be arsed with going through a lot of the other stuff, you know what I mean? So they did a lot of tests. Um, the tests didn't come back normal. Of course, being me, I looked at the online system where you can look at your medical history and see, oh, what were the results of the test? Not that I really knew what I was looking at. I had a rough idea. Um, I got a phone call from the doctors saying, would you, you know, could you please, uh, you know, do not, a, a phone call from the doctor? I had to wait two weeks for that. I was called in the day after. Uh, the doctor wanted to see me the next day. Um, and see, this is a, a, I don't know how, whether, which bit to tell next. I'll tell you, we'll cut straight at the chase. Um, what they've diagnosed is um, advanced gout. Unlike most cases of gout, which is normally in the extremities like your hands and your feet, I've got it in my left hip, as well as my feet, right? There's probably a component to do my hands as well. So what they did is they did a range of movement tests. The best way I can describe this, He's picture this. You know the old game of Twister with the mat with the dots on? Imagine that, but it's on the ceiling. And they're sort of like testing the range of every joint. So can you do this? Ow! No. You know, can you do that? Ow! No. You know, so they put all of my joints through the ringer. Um, I was sore on the Thursday, but the Friday when I woke up was a whole different level. It caused a massive flare-up. Uh, which I was warned could happen, uh, mainly in my left hip. Uh, it got so bad that I spent uh, until halfway through Saturday uh, walking with a stick. I could hardly stand. I could hardly walk. I couldn't bend over. Uh, my range of movement is still um, pretty crap, and I'm still in pain, but I don't need the stick because, see, look, I've got both hands here. Look, okay. um, but it does mean that there's going to be attacks quite regularly. I've started on a course of medication. Now, this, this is not probably the medication I'll end up on because this is just glorified painkillers, all right? I've got to take these for a week along with a one to not so it doesn't rot my stomach, um, which inspires me with all sorts of comments. Take these for a week. I've started today. Um, then stop them. Has it solved the problem? It's not going to. Um, then take from another week, still comes back, if not one, because it's just treating the pain. Then I've got to make another appointment, and I've also got to have another series of blood tests. Now, the way gout works, for those who don't know, is it's urate crystals that form in the joints and surrounding the joints. That might sound all airy fairy and quite nice having crystals in your body, trust me, it's not. Uh, what they feel like is having bits of a broken glass bottle in the affected joint. Um, when I have a major flare-up, you cannot stand anything on it. If it's a fact and say, commonly, one of my toes, right? My, my big toe on my right foot seems to be the first thing to go. I can't even stand bed clothes on it on a night time. Right? Um, Painkillers, normal painkillers, don't really touch it. The ones they've gave me, hopefully will. I won't really know for a couple of days. You know, it's just... So that's basically what's going on. Um, what does this mean going forward? 
Well, if they put me on eventually the pills, that there's three different types of pills that can lessen the chance of a gout flare-up. That means sometimes I will need to use my stick. I don't like using my stick. I'm supposed to use it when my arthritis and my hips are bad. I don't use it because the thing is, this is going to make this worse, my paranoia about it. And I'll explain what it is, right? Uh, if it was the case if I was using a stick all the time, not a problem, I would suck it up. But it's the fact that Friday and Saturday, when I was, you know, Saturday especially, um, I had to use my stick in public. Now then, Sunday and Monday, no stick. Then it could be the end of this week, I could be using the stick, but it could be the other side. So suddenly I'll have a stick in a different hand. Now people are going to go, wait a minute, is he just doing this for attention? Trust me, I'm fucking not, right? And the one thing I don't want you to do any more than I have to is use a stick. Um, obviously with a history of carpal tunnel and now nerve damage in my hands, putting a lot of weight on one wrist like this, not really a good thing moving forward. Also, I keep thinking people are going to take the piss out of us. That's the honesty. I'm a very vain individual. I might not look it, right? But I am. Um, and although I'll take the nick yet of myself, there's some things that do hurt deeply. So there's all that going on. So it does mean that people are going to have to get used to occasionally me using a stick. It won't be all the time. If they can get it under control, it'll be quite rare. Now, what I'm having to do at the moment is quite a hefty change of lifestyle. Um, the doctor was telling me, and she said, look, there's these resources online, like NHS resources, stuff like this, about gout. However, and when they say however, you know there's a butt coming. And she said, look, the sample size used for these is so bloody small, there's effectively chucking a dart at a dartboard. Use that as a rough guide only, but the bottom line is you're going to have to find out what it is that triggers you. It could be beer. Um, it could be one particular type of food. A lot of people uh, say that red meat is a major thing that caused it for them. Some people can never drink again. Some people are fine on one particular beer or cider or something. Um, some people are fine with red meat, but not with other stuff. It's a very complex minefield, and it's going to take quite a while for me to work it out. So what I'm starting at the moment is I've cut a lot of the red meat out of my diet. Um, so what I'm doing this week is I'm trying to keep this. I'm allowing myself one. A lot of red meat in this week, right? Um, the rest is going to be stuff like chicken and fish. But again, I can't have to say tuna fish, just after we've bought a load of tins of tuna fish for me, because that's one of the things that can flare it up. So we've now got four tins of tuna fish stuck in the cupboard that will probably not get used. You know, but I've got to be careful what I do. That's the bottom line. In fact, that bumping was me bumping at the wall, by the way. And that crunching noise is my elbow. That's what my elbow sounds like. There's crystals in my elbow at the moment, so yeah, that's what it sounds like. Um, if you needed proof. Um, so yeah, it's not brilliant news. Uh, I did want to explain to people properly what it entails. Um, I don't know. It's not something that can cure. But if I'm lucky, very lucky, I might be able to get it under control. But here's the crux. I'm going to spell it out in words of one syllable or less for anybody that will be wondering. Does this mean that Wayne is going to live like a monk and live to the age of 110? If that means being in constant pain and not doing anything that I find enjoyable, whether it's playing guitar or going out and seeing people or things like that, no. Doesn't mean I'm going to be irresponsible and crack on as if nothing's happened. Also, no. What I will do is find a middle ground, a sensible middle ground. I realise there's going to be flare-ups. I can manage some of those, some I won't be able to. Um, but it's important to me to still have a quality of life, not just to be alive, to be in pain. Right? Um, <clears throat> don't worry, it's not COVID, it's just I've been smoking too many cigarettes. Um... Now, some people say, again, smoking might be a cause. So I'm going to have to do a lot of tests on this. I honestly don't know. I, you know, I've told you what I know. Uh, I know people that have had it, but it is quite unusual for it to have got as advanced as it has to get to the hip. Um, 
and I'm going to have to take the weight off that foot now because I've been standing here for far too long. Um, what you normally don't see is when I'm standing here, I'm normally resting on something, right? You know, but at the moment I'm not. Um, and I'm having to stand on my right foot. I'm standing like a stalk. But anyway, um, we'll see how it ends, you know. Well, not ends, but you know what I mean? How it progresses. But I think it's going to be one of those things that's going to take quite a while um, to get under control. Uh, I'm hoping it doesn't affect too many things in my life moving forward. But it is what it is. I'm getting older. And I put a lot of this down to the fact that I was simply getting older. There's also a chance, as there is a number of other things on my list of things to talk to the doctor about, this is only the first item on the list, right? That this could all be one symptomatic cause. That's what some of the, you know, clever money is on at the moment. But some of that stuff can take months or even years to diagnose. So well, I'm going to keep on cracking on, going down my list of things at the doctors, you know, uh, one by one and seeing what happens, you know. Um, I'm still living in hope, but at some point they'll be able to upload my consciousness into a, like, a Terminator-style body and off I go for the next 450 years. But uh, let's face it, that ain't going to happen in my life today. Um, so I'll see you all next time. And I'll try and be talking about something other than health, assuming that I'm able to actually stand up and not be in loads of pain again. But this flare-up seems to be coming to an end over the next, like, you know, four days. We don't know when the next one is. So I'm Wayne Robson. This is Life After 3D. Do the whole like and subscribe thing. I never mentioned that, you know. You know, you're supposed to do a like and subscribe. And, oh, there's a super thanks or super like or whatever the bollocks. I've got an email about it to do. You know the drill, right? Give it a go. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.